Looping CVs is great for interactive performances. Welcome back to the ever-growing video series about Droid, the universal CV processor. Today we'll have a look at the CV Looper. This is a powerful tool for recording and playing back the time course of CV voltages. It has a clocked operation and thus a very precise timing and it has a very easy to use interface. Let's start with a simple example. You can download this and all other patch examples of this video from the Droid download page. I've put your link into the video description. And this example we want to record the movements of one external CV, which is used for controlling the pitch of an oscillator. It could, for example, come from a joystick, a ribbon controller, or maybe some other fancy input device. But for sake of simplicity, I simply use one of the pressure points knobs. Of course, I could use one of the knobs of a P2B8, but looping an external CV shows better what's the point. Of course, you could also loop a generated CV, but I'm not really sure what the use would be of that. Okay, so let's start with a completely empty patch. Since I want to use at least one of the buttons, I start by declaring one P2, P8. The next thing we need is a clock signal. Usually that would come from an external input somewhere from the rest of your patch. But for this example, we simply create an internal clock by defining an LFO. We send its square wave output to the internal patch cable clock and run it at four beats per second. Why do we need a clock? Well, that's mandatory for the CV looper since it uses it for the definition of the length of the loop. The loop length is always specified in terms of clock ticks. This makes it super simple to adjust it to the course of your actual music. If your music or your modular patch does not work with a clock, simply use an internal clock like I do here. Now comes the actual CV looper circuit. I feed the clock to the clock input and set the length of the loop to 16, which in this example means 4 seconds. There's an input called CV in, which reads the CV to be looped. I take the external CV at input 1 and CV out sends the looped or simply bypassed CV, in my case, to 01, to the first output of the droid. The last thing we need is a button for switching on and off looping. For that, we first define a toggle button. Otherwise, you would have to hold the button all the time while the loop is active. This wouldn't be very convenient. So let's go up in the patch, add a toggle button circuit here as a button we use the first button on the first controller. The LED is nice to specify, so the button will be lit when it's active. And now we can use this L1.1 for the input loop switch. And the CV looper will then activate the loop while the button is active. Well, I guess that's pretty much the most simple example for a CV looper, but let's try it out. Let's load the patch and let's connect the output of the pressure points of this first knob to the CV input 1. Let's connect the output of the droid to the pitch input of an oscillator and let's listen. As you can see, with the knob, I can change the pitch. The CV looper simply bypasses the input CV to the output. And if I activate the loop, then it replays the last 16 clock ticks of my wiggling. And now we come to a nice speciality of the Droid CV looper. It can work with a gate. First of all, that means that together with the CV, you can record the current state of a gate. Let's use button 2 as a manual gate and feed it into the looper by means of the input gate in. The output gate out now sends this gate signal to the first jack of our G8 expander. So when the looper is in 
In active mode, in bypass mode, the gate simply is passed through to G1. And if in looping mode, you will get the recorded gate pattern here. Okay, so load the patch. And now the second button activates the gate. You see it's passed through to G1. If I activate loop mode, you see that the re uh, pattern has been recorded and is replayed. And if we now use the pattern, for example, to modify our filter cutoff, then we can play a little melody. And this will be recorded by the looper. So, what's the point of recording a gate together with the CV? Well, it's not just that it's convenient, because for that you could simply use a second CV looper for recording the gate. So, first of all, when you use a gate, the CV is being recorded to the tape just while the gate is active. And this makes two additional features possible. The first one is overlay mode. When overlay is on, while the gate is active, the input CV will overwrite that on the tape, allowing you to overlay the loop CV with your own from time to time. Let's try this out. Okay, first let's play something into the loop. And now, if I press the manual gate, I can play to the content in the loop. As you can see, the manual playing always overrides the contents of the loop. So when overlay is on and the gate is active, the looper momentarily switches to a bypass mode and simply copies the input CV to the output regardless of the loop's content. Overdub is a bit similar, but now when the gate is active, the contents of the loop will be overridden with the current CV. That way, you change the loop on the fly. This time, we add another toggle button for turning on and off overdub mode. So let's add a toggle button circuit. Let's take button 3 and set overdub to the value of this button. Now I activate overdub mode with button 3. And the funny thing is I can even start with an empty loop. Because now if I play something in overdub mode, it will always be added to the loop. As you can see, when I add something new, it always overrides the contents of the loop at that position where I add the new thing. There are two more modes that are good candidates for mapping them to a button. Bypass and pause. So let's create two more toggle buttons. I make this by simply copying this one. So let's use button 4 for bypass mode and button 5 for pause. Bypass is L4, pause is L1.5. Okay, so let's load the patch a last time for this video and let's start with activating the loop, which is empty. Activate overdub, play something into the loop. And now if I press pause, it's like freezing the loop at that point. 
You see, if the gate is active when I press pause, it will remain active. And otherwise, it's silent. But when it's in pause mode, I cannot change anything. The incoming CV is completely ignored. That's the difference to bypass mode. When I press bypass, the contents of the loop is still being saved, but now the incoming CV again is bypassed to the output. So bypass mode is basically disabling the loop for the while and pause is completely freezing everything. If you like this VLooper, please write in the comments how you have used it in your patches. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe and see you next time.